Young colleagues, welcome to my workplace for hands-on FACO and SICS training. This is an intumescent cataract. Let us see how I managed this case. I am going to discuss what I did and what you should not do. So, this patient is under topical anesthesia. In intumescent cataract, if you are a new surgeon, it is better that you give block because intumescent cataract is a challenge itself by placing the case under topical, you are adding on more challenge. So, it is better that you do such cases under block, but the orbital pressure should not be raised. You can administer IV mannitol before surgery so that there is some shrinkage of vitreous cavity and optimum amount of block should be given. Yes, the anti-capsule should be stained because we cannot see the capsule to get some contrast you must stain the anterior capsule. When the dye was not available, we have done rexis in such cases without dye, but there is no point not using the dye at this time. Now, why uterate our forceps? Because as soon as we puncture, the flap may tend to go to periphery. So, we can easily catch swiftly the tag and we may be able to retrieve the rexis, retrieve the runaway. And in this case, see, I am milking away, milking out the cortex through the small opening. The cortical matter should be removed in such a way that there is no elevation. There are some elevation in the sub incisional area. I am expressing that out. There is some elevation at 2 o'clock near the side port. I will be careful not to release the rexis at this point. And now, while injecting visco, an air bubble was there. New surgeons should inject some more visco and remove it so that you can see better. To save time, I did this. In spite of the air bubble being there, I tried the rexis. But young surgeons should not consider this. You can have enough time for a case. Size of this rexis is about 5.25 millimeter. And now the handpiece goes in. The machine is Faro's from Oatly. The FECO needle goes in with its bevel down. Some superficial lens matter is removed. And then the handpiece is turned to make the bevel up. And this is my technique, submarine chop. The FECO needle goes into the substance of the nucleus and as it travels, in this case, there was a crack in front and the nucleus abruptly divided into two pieces. This is a totally unedited recording and you are not missing anything. The large pieces are subdivided into smaller pieces and they are emulsified. Ultrasonic energy is 
70 percent in this case, flow rate is 47 ml per minute and vacuum is 470 millimeter of mercury. This is the last nuclear piece. Yes, there is a nuclear piece, nucleus or epinuclear piece near the side port. Before aspirating the cortex, we must remove this piece. It should not get hidden under the iris and it should not cause endothelial decompensation postoperatively at the 6 o'clock. Now, cortical cleanup is being done with this Simco cannula. This is a 23 gauze Simco. We have only one side port. Size of the side port is about 1.6 millimeter and the 23 gauze Simco goes easily through this. If the side port is 90 degree away from the main wound, it decreases the induced astigmatism. So, we can have a little larger side port. If we place the side port 90 degree away from the wound. If we place two side ports, the size of the two side ports combined is about 2 millimeter, but here we have 1.6 or 1.7 millimeter of side port. And now hydro implantation of a single piece monofocal intraocular lens is done. The left hand instrument is used to place the trailing haptic in the bag. Since there is no visco in the anterior chamber and in the capsular bag, the surgery time is shortened. Moxie and then the side port is closed by hydration. And finally, a thorough lavage of the anterior chamber is done. At this time, a gentle stream of PSAs goes towards the corneal endothelium and whatever visco molecules sticks to the corneal endothelium is removed. Integrity of the wounds are checked and the case is concluded. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, empathy and great surgical competence.